Hi and welcome to another 5 Minute Friday. Face coverings seem to be one of the big things that people are talking about at the moment. Where we have to wear them, what they look like, and even perhaps having to wear them in places of worship as well. It's taken my mind to a place where face coverings are mentioned in the Bible and in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah has this tremendous uh, inside, a tremendous sight of God upon the throne. And we read this in Isaiah 6 in the first verse, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train, his robes, filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And we're given an insight into something of the tremendous majesty and holiness and glory of God as these angelic beings are flying and also in reverence and utter respect for the glory and greatness of God, they cover their faces. Does we have to increasingly cover our faces with different activities that we do? I want our minds to go and be reminded of this passage because a little bit later on, we have this tremendous expression as Isaiah realizes something of the greatness of that which is before him in that which he is seeing. And he says, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And we're reminded very forcibly that God is still on his throne. Isaiah is going to be sent to a people, as the rest of the passage goes on to say, who are not necessarily going to believe him. And it's going to be a tough job that he's going to be given to do. And we think of the great book that Isaiah uh, wrote, uh, tremendous prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus, some tremendous verses, uh, not only concerning Christ, but also of encouragement and blessing but down through the years have helped so many. And yet it wasn't an easy assignment that he was given. And what was going to help him keep going? Remembering that God is on the throne remembering the glory and greatness of the one that he saw that day. I don't know if you know the hymn, God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. The words are just coming up on the screen now. And I've been really interested to learn over the last few days a little bit about the background to this hymn. The hymn was written by somebody called Kitty Suffield uh, and she wrote it in 1929. So it goes back a long time and the story is quite remarkable. She met her husband because of a train that she was traveling on that broke down in the snow. And somebody went and banged on the man's door and says there are some passengers in great danger of freezing. And he showed them some hospitality and helped them stay warm. She wrote to him to thank him for his kindness. And in process of time, they ended up getting married. They weren't Christians at the time and they were converted under the preaching of a man who had the surname of Shea. As is obvious from the hymn that the lady wrote, she had musical talent and she encouraged the musical ability of the preacher's teenage son to use his ability for God. And he grew up to be George Beverly Shea, who did so much work with Billy Graham and many, many people were saved through the work that they did. What a tremendous uh, underscoring of the truth containing that hymn, God is still on the throne, working his purposes out. What a great God we have. And as Isaiah was sent to a people, as he said, here am I, send me. He was willing to go and do a difficult task to tell people the message that God wanted them to know. Why was he willing to do it? Well, he'd had the right view of God. And that's where it all starts, isn't it? And he came to understand something of the holiness of God. He then had a right view of himself, and that would remind us of humility. As he speaks in verses 5 to 7 of himself, and the Lord deals with his sin. But not only is there the right view of God in holiness and the right view of himself in humility, but there's the right view of others in heeding the call in verses 8 to 13. I trust that we would have our eyes upward. Somebody has said, if you don't like the outlook, then try the uplook. 
But as we look around in an uncertain world, difficulty and problems, and maybe even the day-to-day -day frustrations of wearing a face covering, let's not forget this tremendous passage. Yes, it makes reference to face coverings, but it's a tremendous reminder that God is still on the throne. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe and select the bell alert below and we trust that future videos will also be an encouragement to you.